All right, so we're turning our heads now to European football on the Sportsmax zone. The finalists in the 2023-24 edition of the Europa League were confirmed Thursday with both semi-finals now completed. One of those finalists will be German. This as Bayer Leverkusen continued their hunt for a treble and booked their place in the final after getting past AS Roma. Let's take a look now at the highlights. And Roma in the past. And turned over the top by Svila. Hoffman with the free kick. Roma weren't expecting that. Oh, it's back off the post. And it's been scooped to safety for Roma by Ndika. Grimaldo. He's gone for the return. Frimpong. Another fine save. Not once, but twice. Two brilliant stops. How on earth did Svila get to that? Swung in towards Lukaku. Oh, it's a penalty. It's Paredes. But what a huge moment in this tie. In by Angelino. Mancini won the header. Palacios. And the break is on now. It's three against two. Adley unmarked. And Hoffman denied. Pellegrini to deliver. Roma claiming that there was a handball in there. It does catch the hand. The hand is in an unnatural position. And Danny McAuley, having looked at this, I'm pretty sure will award Roma a second penalty. Straight down the middle last time. Bottom corner this time, and Roma have scored twice from the penalty spot in Serie A, and now he's got two in this semi-final. Lojek with his eyes closed, took his eyes off the ball. Swept in by Grimaldo, missed by Svila, oh, it's an own goal, Mancini's own goal. They trail on the night but they lead 3-2 on aggregate. Simply couldn't get out of the way. That's Palacios. Another stop by the goalkeeper, did so well. Uh, in ahead of Lukaku. Roma have been opened up, and that's finished it off. Finished in some style as well. Tar with the initial interception. And Roma running on empty, but not Josip Stanisic. It's a super finish from the right back. Well, surely now it's just a question of blowing the final whistle. And that is it. What a season it has been for Leverkusen and Xabi Alonso. 49 games unbeaten. Joining us to review this match is our Sportsmax football analyst, Leger Williams. Leger, welcome to the Sportsmax zone. We always knew it was going to be a tough second leg for AS Roma, especially because of what happened in the first leg. But what a beautiful fairy tale ending. Well, almost to the ending for Bayer Leverkusen. They've been doing really well. Yeah, as the commentator mentioned, towards the end, they're 49 games unbeaten and they definitely deserve it. They've been playing football like one of the best teams in Europe. Well, they have been performing like one of the best teams in Europe. And I think by now, I think it, people can admit it. They are one of the best teams in Europe, the best performing teams in Europe, definitely. And they definitely deserve to be in the final, uh, even though they went 2-0 behind today. It was definitely a case of a, a little bit of poor finishing and being a bit unlucky to concede two penalties because... They were the dominant team for majority of that game against AS Roma. And AS Roma are not a pushover, and they have been performing really well under Daniele De Rossi since he has come in. But Leverkusen were, I think, a, a different world in terms of talent and quality. And they definitely proved that towards the end and once again finished the game with a very late strike and preserved their unbeaten record, 49 now. And they're definitely pushing forward to do something that's never been done in European football, and that would be a 
treble while being undefeated for all three trophies. Yeah, and Aston Villa would really have to sit back and wonder what's been happening with the team's form. Their boss, Una Emery, said that, you know, they were not as competitive as he wanted them to be. The match was lost in the first 90 minutes. What do you make of his comments? Yeah, I think in terms of Aston Villa and their tie, I don't think that they, they didn't approach the tie well in the first leg. Um, they were a bit complacent, and as Una Emery said, they definitely did get the... The, 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 the worst end of it and Olympiacos were very clinical and I think the second leg was more of a formality today and Olympiacos got the comfortable win in the end. Yeah and goals coming from the man Ayub El Kabi. There will be a lot of calls for him coming from everywhere especially because Lish, his contract comes to the end of this season so I think based on what we would have seen from him for Bayer Leverkusen a lot of big teams will be interested in him. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think um, Leverkusen showed a lot of a lot of prowess throughout the season. A lot of their players performed really well, so there will be calls for a lot of their talented players. But I think how the the, the team is comprised, we won't be seeing too many um, players leaving, especially because Xabi Alonso will be staying as well. Mm. Yeah, I want to ask you quickly about Xabi Alonso, but before we get to that, Liz, I want to get a comment from you about Leverkusen's affinity for stoppage time and really late goals in protecting this marvellous unbeaten run they've had. They were um, losing in stoppage time today and they got the equaliser in the seventh minute of stoppage time, which we had seen before in domestic football in the Bundesliga in the past three weeks. I think two or three games they were trailing um, at full time or near full time. What does that say about the team? Yeah, we've seen it in the Europa League as well. Um, yeah. the, it just shows that they have a really good fighting spirit and they've been performing really well. They've been pushing for late goals and they just have a never say that attitude and that attitude has been, you know, been put forth. They've been a team that's attacked straight till the death. Even in a game like this, many teams would have tried to just see out the game, but they went for that second goal to preserve that unbeaten run and they did really well to get it. It was a really good goal. Yeah, and Xabi Alonso's success as a, a coach still... I think in his fifth year as a, 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 a coach uh, following his, re his retirement, we have established on the show many times, Liz, that a lot of these former players starting out their coaching careers have difficulties and the, the transition is often not very successful, certainly not in the early stages. But Xabi Alonso appears to have something special, doesn't he? Yeah, I think immediately following this season, he's catapulted himself into top five coach in the world stratosphere for me. I think not only with his tactics, but how he manages the squad, his profiling of players, even looking forward to how he's building his squad. A, a, a strong rumor that Leverkusen, for example, a strong rumor that Leverkusen has right now would be getting an Alex Garcia from Girona, which would be an excellent signing in my opinion. That just fits the ethos of what they want to do in central midfield. So I think that even more so goes to show the, the, the relationship that he has with the sporting director, Rolfes, and what Bayer Leverkusen are building. But in terms of on-the-field play, I, I genuinely don't think we'll have enough time for me to speak about. I could genuinely speak about all the things that Leverkusen tried to do for hours and how successful they are at it because they're such a well-versed tactical team, not only with their shapes, their understanding of tempo, their understanding of space, and they're just a phenomenal team. And I saw someone sum it up really well a couple of weeks ago after the first leg, or last week after the first leg, they said that this is a team that reminds them the most since Pep Guardiola's Barcelona of, of that team in terms of their, their, how they hold their shape, but still understand space and fluidity and tempo at the same, same time. So it's just an extremely impressive um, Bayer Leverkusen team. Xabi Alonso is an excellent, excellent coach. As I said, I think he's probably a top five coach in the world already. Um, I know that, that will cause a little bit of a fur. Yeah, mm. but you know, I just, I just I honestly think that's the case, and he'll continue to prove it. Even if he didn't win a trophy this season, I, I would think so. So these trophies are just icing on the cake for him. Yeah, top, top stuff from my Leverkusen and Xavi Alonso. Well, the other semi final took place in Bergamo, Italy, with Atalanta hosting Marseille. That tie was finally poised at 1 0 coming into the second leg. Let's take a look now at how it panned out. Took the Marseille win against Olympiacos back in 
Oh, Lookman. Isolated there. Steps inside. Good shot. Good goal. Atalanta are ahead on the night. Lopez beaten from just outside the box. But from the moment there, he was isolated with the defender. He was favourite to cut inside. Onto the right foot and go for goal. Oh, it deflected off Shika. What a cross. Here's Lookman. Good chance. Lovely goal. 2-0. Matteo Ruggieri. Atalanta now driving their way through to a European final for the first time. Get forward with menace, with desire and with finishing ability. But Lookman played such a huge role. Beautiful little tap off to it. What a night. Champagne and fireworks in Bergamo. And now Bilal Torre gets away from Valeri. Can he finish the tie? Oh, yes, he can. Oh, yes, he can. Atalanta 3, Marseille 0. Atalanta roaring towards their first ever European final. And they have done it in style. They have taken their chances when they have come. Marseille have huffed and puffed, but they've not really been in it. They passed the ball poorly and did again there. This time it was Condogbia who gave it away. Valeri tried to pull back on El Bilal Torre and he finished it so lovely. Atalanta 3, Marseille 0. Atalanta 4-1 on aggregate against Marseille. In a packed stadium, Lige, how much did, of course, home advantage count for Atalanta because the fans were roaring? Yeah, because they had the opportunity to go to their first ever European final, Atalanta, and they definitely took that opportunity with both hands. Uh, this Atalanta team are a really talented one, and they have been for quite some time. But a lot of credit and props has to go to Jean Pierre Gasparini. The job that he has done over the past half a decade or so has been brilliant, whether it be selling some of his best players, restructuring the team, but still keeping that same tactical plan and style of play and ethos around the team of being such a hard working team. And no matter who comes in, the, the, the team still seems to perform at a very high level there in the Coppa Italia final and then now in a Europa League final for the first time in their history, as I said. And this Atalanta team is filled with quality and they continue to prove that uh, Marseille, unfortunately, there were, there were really no match. Uh, John Louis Gasset and his team, they didn't really offer too much. And I think it was clear to see from the first leg, although it was a tight one, that Atalanta, once they buckled down, would have the beating of them. Yeah, um, it sounds to me, Lish, as if you're giving Gasparini about 80% of the credit for this historic advance to the European <laughs> uh, a final in Europe for Atalanta. Well, I think in almost every case, if there's a successful team, I give the coach 80% of the props. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's I, I, your style. Because that's just that's just the fact of, of what it is. And the coach is the one who is the orchestrator of everything. He could have the best players in the world. If you're not able to put them or, or surround them in an environment for them to succeed and play them in their right roles, make sure that they're happy with their game time, their minutes, and then also have a, a key tactical plan of how to defend, how to attack, how to manage games. The, 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 the job of a coach is, is much greater than meets the average eye. And Gasparini and his job being there that long, being called almost a nearly man in Italy for so long, being hung out to dry when he took the Inter job a couple of years ago. So I think this is really a lot of his doing and he has rotated this squad and done extremely well with their recruitment strategy and he definitely deserves a lot of the plaudits for this Atalanta team. Yeah, well, we'll give you a couple of weeks to make a definitive prediction on this final, but just to wrap the segment, uh, does Atalanta have a great shot of stopping Vale Leverkusen for the title? I think that's a really tough question, Sir Lance, because yeah. as I mentioned, I do think that Bayer Leverkusen is one of the top, top teams in world football. Um, it, it's going to be tough for Atalanta to stop them, although Atalanta will give it a really good shot. I li I, I'm a guy that likes to rewatch games and rewatch some game footage, but as of right now, I, 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 th I have to go with Bayer Leverkusen as the favourites. I think they'll be favoured uh, against probably 99% of the teams in world football yeah. at this current moment. Yeah, I just wanted to point out to you as well, Liz, before we wrap the segment, that your tag as the prediction guru is, is under pressure because uh, Juan Giarango predicted that, Bar uh, that Real Madrid would have won the second leg of the UEFA Champions League final against Bayern Munich 2-1 coming from behind. He was specific. That was brilliant, wasn't it? What do you have to say for yourself? Well, you know, it, it's similar to, to what the lad said on the warm-up show earlier. 
um, in order to be a world class, in order to be a superstar, you have to do it over a, a matter of years, a matter of months. I don't think and someone... And not just one off. Yeah. You see, this is the thing, you know, when, <laughs> when you're good at things... Sir, imagine someone's first day on the job and, and you have a little sick day, Sir Lance, and they come and they do a really good job. And then all of a sudden they're saying, this and this and such and such is better than Sir Lance at his job. That would be blasphemy. And I think it's a very similar case here. I'll just leave it there. That's all I'm saying. Well, we will definitely be leaving that discussion right over there. And we'll be heading to Sir Lance, as he said. He will be at the track and he'll be serving up all the top stories from around the world when it comes to the sport of kings, horse racing.